example 8.1, a beam of protons moves at three times 10 to the five meters per second through a uniform magnetic field of two Tesla that is directed along the positive z-axis. The velocity of each proton lies in the xz plane at an angle 30 degrees to the z-axis. Find the force of the proton using the right-hand rule and using the cross product algebra. To get started, we always have to define a proper coordinate system. Define a proper right hand rule coordinate system that best suits this situation. We know that the motion takes place in the xy plane, so we want to see the motion in the xy plane. In that case, I prefer to pick the y-axis, which would then be the y-axis either into or out of the plane because it's just easier to visualize the motion. So since the motion um, occurs in the xz plane, Pick the y axis to be either in or out of the screen. And like I just said here, it's just it's it makes uh, visualizing the motion easier. So then I'm going to set up a right-hand coordinate system with my hand, and then I'm going to rotate my middle finger it until it pokes either in or out of the screen. Okay, so if I rotate this, I can rotate rotate this coordinate system multiple ways. So the with my hand, this is what I saw. I saw that if I have my y, which will be plus y in that direction, then my that's going to be my middle finger, then this immediately becomes my index finger, which is x, and then my thumb is then pointing in the positive z direction. I prefer not to have this coordinate system. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to rotate it. So now I'm going to create a rotation of the exact same coordinate system. And I'm going to say that I'm going to choose this coordinate system, which is exactly the same. But now I have x going in that direction, z going in that direction. So this is my preferred right hand rule coordinate system. So that's what I'm going to choose. Now, reading the problem again, we're then going to go in and apply this to this coordinate system. So what do I know? It says here that let me let me be careful. So apply, this coordinate system to the question. So the first thing that I see is that I have protons. And of course, protons don't have 
the charge doesn't have a vector, but that just tells us that we're going to define Q as plus E. The next thing, it tells us that the velocity is 30 degrees relative to the z-axis. So all these angles are measured relative to the magnetic field. So then I'm going to say that I have a velocity. And this velocity has a speed of 3.0 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. That's its speed. And then its direction is then 30 degrees relative to B, the B um, direction, which in this case is the Z direction. And then finally, we're saying that the magnetic field B is going to be B naught in the Z direction where B naught is to Tesla. So now I'm going to start sketching my pictures here. So I'm going to start off with sketching V and B first. So if I look at my coordinate system, it's looking something like this. Right? So I have my So yeah, let's let's write this out to be clear. So let's we're going to sketch the vectors V B and F at the end. So here's my coordinate system. So then I start looking at this and I'm going to say, okay, so if this is my coordinate system right here, and this is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing I have a magnetic field in the Z direction. This is B right here. And we know that's in the Z direction. Now I have a vector between the Z and the X coordinate system. So that means I have a vector in this plane, which we call V. And then I'm going to project this onto this, which is an angle of 30 degrees. But we only care about the parallel and perpendicular components. So if I look at this field again, I have my magnetic fields right here. And so now that I have this as my reference, I'm now going to project the, the velocity. So that means this right here is the velocity that's parallel to the magnetic field. This is the velocity that's perpendicular to the magnetic field. And what we know here is that in this situation, we know that when we go to look at the force, we know that V parallel to B, that's automatically zero. We know that V perpendicular cross B is not zero. So we only have one surviving component, which is the perpendicular. So now if I now add in my force vector, I then see that I have this. I have my V perpendicular component. And you could see here relative to the Z axis, the perpendicular component is gonna be sine of theta. So this will then be V sine of 30, and this will then be in the X direction. When I look at the magnetic field, we already know it's pointing in this direction. So this guy is in the Z direction. And then finally, we have our magnetic force. And according to our magnetic force, we know that it's got to be perpendicular to those two. If I use the right-hand rule, it shows you that I'm going to have a force in this direction like that. So that's our magnetic force. So our magnetic force is in the negative y-axis. In other words, we know that f of b 
will then equal to the magnitude f of b with the minus sign in the y direction. So now let's put it all together. So the b force is then going to be f of b qv perpendicular cross b. So when I look at the magnitude of this thing, it's got to be perpendicular b like this. And I'm going to find here that I'm going to get a y direction like this. So in other words, our job here is to calculate this magnitude of the magnetic force because now we know the direction. So calculating the magnitude f of b. So if I calculate that magnitude, we know that f of b must be qv perpendicular b. And so when I write in the details, this will then be a value that then reads what? It reads e v sine of 30 times b naught. So if I start putting in my values, this is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs times the speed, which is 3.0 times 10 to the 5 meters per second times the sine of 30, times the magnetic field, which is 2 Tesla. And that's going to give me a value of 4.8 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons. And of course, that is a tiny number. So in summary, we have that f of b is then going to be minus 4.8 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons pointing into the plates. Now, when I write that y-axis or y-direction, you know it has to be pointing into the page, as we just said. Now, if I look at part B here, we now want to repeat the same problem or the same calculation um, using the algebra of vector cross products. So let's look at some of the algebra that we need to know here. So if I have vectors like this, I have I cross I, J cross J, K cross K, these guys all have to be zero. So why do they have to be zero? Because when you look at this thing, if I have two vectors, like I, so if I have I, like here, and then I place another I right on top of it, you can see here that this guy is going to give me zero area. So there's no area in between those two vectors that, so the spanned area is zero. So what this tells us here is that the spanned area is zero. That's what that means. And then the other piece of it is that there's a piece that's not zero. And the thing to remember is that it's cyclic. 
So you got to pay attention to the cyclic properties. So look what happens. I go I cross J gives me K. Now, you, you should be able to do that with your right-hand rule, of course. Now, what do I mean by it's cyclic? Look how I, I now goes to the back, and then J and K move to the left. So then I'm going to get J cross K. That's going to give me I. And because it's cyclic, then I'm going to do what? I'm going to move J to the back. And then I move everything else to the left. So then I'm going to get K cross I equals J. And that's showing you here that these have a cyclic pattern. So when, so when I look at the area, since we're looking at magnitude, so if I look at an axis that reads I in that direction, J in this direction, then the area spanned, in this case, since they're unit vectors, that area right here is 1 squared, which is the same as 1. So let's write out the vector components and then plug them into the magnetic force. So the vector components, in this case, will have the velocity v that has a parallel component, which is in the z direction, and it has a perpendicular component, which is in the x direction. And our magnetic field, which is in the z direction. So the vector components uh, subbed, substitute into the magnetic force. equation gives the following. I have F of B. This is going to give me QV cross B. But this is the same as E. And then I'm going to get V parallel in the Z direction plus V perpendicular in the X direction crossed with B here, which will be B naught in the Z direction. So now, just distributing the, this uh, algebra right here, we are then going to have that I'm going to get E V parallel B naught, and then I'm going to get Z cross Z. And then my next term is then going to be E perpendicular B naught, and then I'm going to get something that then reads X plus, oops, not X, X cross Z. So when I'm looking at this, we can see here is that this guy here, we see here is zero. Because the area between the two vectors are the same, is zero, excuse me. But here, look at this guy. When we go up here, note that the order of things, so if I look at the cyclic pattern, so the cyclic pattern shows that if I look at x and z, it should be z cross x, but this is x cross z. So then that means here is that in order to do that, I have to add a minus sign. 
So in other words, this guy right here has a minus sign, which is the opposite. So it inherits a minus sign. So in this situation, we see here then that this is then going to be y hat with a minus sign. So then if I put everything together, I'm going to have a magnetic force that's going to read QV cross B. And so I'm going to get a value that then reads E V perpendicular B naught. And then I'm going to get a minus y direction, which is what we had last time. And that reads minus 4.8 times 10 to the minus 14 newtons in the y direction. And so this is how I would get it using the algebra of cross products.